What is up? Welcome to the podcast where me, your host, Andrew Bermudez, I'm the co-founder and CEO of Digsy, which for those of you who don't know what Digsy is, it's a one-stop shop for marketing commercial real estate properties online and outsourcing your work. Uh, In this pod, we have great conversations with commercial real estate professionals everywhere. We talk about their careers, histories, wins, fails, and they share with us what's made them successful so you can succeed too. We also include episodes with tips, tricks, something that we call hacks to help you save time, energy, and ultimately win more business and close more deals. So with that being said, thank you for tuning in and here we go. Hey everyone, it's Andrew Bermudez, co-founder and CEO of Digsy, the commercial real estate search engine that works for you. Uh, I've got an awesome guest today, uh, Jessica Mauser, president of Lee and Associates in the Northern California area. And she's going to tell us a little bit of her history and what she's doing uh, to really just stand apart from the competition and just crush it out there. Um, If you are new to this program, if you are on Apple Podcasts, make sure to subscribe or whatever podcast app you have. Uh, if you are watching the video version of this on YouTube, please make sure to subscribe and hit the thumb button uh, below. Make sure to uh, allow notifications so that you get notified every time that we uh, we release a new episode. Uh, and with that being said, Jess, great to have you, man. Uh, and um, yeah, welcome aboard. Thanks, Andrew. Appreciate uh, having me on. This is uh, it's always exciting and fun to be part of one of your podcasts. So I'm uh, I was I jumped at the opportunity when you shot me the email of, Hey, can you jump onto this? So I'm ready. Totally. You know, I think we we start off where you and I developed a, a closer relationship. Cause I think it, it ties into this. For yeah. example, I, I was with Lee and associates many, many years. A lot of people know me from like social media and, you know, blogs and things like that. Um, but then you and I until recently uh, just became uh, became close friends and where out of all places do we, did we meet Jess? Clubhouse. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that Clubhouse, funny? It's the new, it's the new connector of all things, which I, I'm fully behind. It's a, it's, it's a, I, I don't want to call it a cult like app, but once you're on it, it is very cult. Like you get onto it and it's like, this is great. I'm drinking the juice. I'm on it. So um, yeah, it's a clubhouse has been really fun and it's been great for connecting dots across the industry and really spreading your geographic arm. Um, I don't know that in a pre COVID world, I would be talking to as many people in, in different geographies that I do now. I think that actually COVID is because we had to open up doors to communicate um, in different ways. It's actually opened up our communication across the whole country. And you're not just talking with people within your own firm anymore because you have a clubhouse where you can go talk with anybody who's making themselves accessible. And I think that's, what's really cool about that platform. And obviously it's been great for us to find some dots and some connection points in there. And it's like, Hey, you used to be Lee guy. I'm a Lee gal. Like, this is cool. Um, you know, and it, it gives you a lot to build from. So, yeah. So tell us a little bit about, about Jess Mauser. Uh, who are you? How'd you start in commercial real estate? How many kids you have? Social security <laughs> numbers, <laughs> pin numbers, <laughs> I would like, I would like the code to get into your garage. Um, So please start. I'm taking notes, by the way. You're taking good, good. There's, there's (laughs) lots of notes to be had. I would like to say that I lead a very boring, unchaotic life, but I think it's anything but boring and uh, unchaotic. It's fully chaotic. So um, Jessica Mauser, president of the Lee East Bay office, which is located in Pleasanton, California. I grew up in a little town right next door called Livermore, California, about 45 miles east of San Francisco. Um, Grew up riding horses. Mom was a waitress, single mom. And uh, at some point in my life, I went and interviewed for a marketing position at a commercial real estate firm back in 05. And um, at that point, I actually had my real estate license just out of a whim. Didn't know what I was going to do with it, but I had a license. So I showed up at this commercial real estate firm and the, the gentleman who's interviewing me looks at me and he's one of my favorite mentors and we're so close to this day. He goes, hey, why don't you want to be a broker? I'm like, I don't even know what a broker is. So can I just have this marketing job and collect a paycheck? He's like, sure, you can have that job, but you're going to be a broker one day. And I kind of laughed it off. I started the job, you know, maybe a, a week or two later. 
um, small tenant rep firm, class A office space. At the time we were doing the ask.com deal in uh, downtown Oakland. There was some uh, Amherst Pharmaceuticals. So I got to be on the back end of some really uh, good sized deals from the beginning, but I didn't know what it all meant. I had no idea what I had just stepped into. Um, and so from there, my career evolved. I decided I didn't want to do tenant rep in Oakland on, on office space. I decided I wanted to be a retail broker. Um, restaurants were something near and dear to me. I grew up working in the restaurant business. And so those are the businesses that I felt uh, the pull to, to work with. And that's actually what influenced me into the retail sector. I knew nothing about retail at the moment. Um, and I made the leap to Lee because it was an entrepreneurial platform. And there wasn't a retail presence in that particular office. And so I decided I'd rather build something that I can put my name to than try and jump onto something that I may or may not like or have to rebuild something that doesn't necessarily work. Um, so that's why I went to Lee. And since then, it's been a great ride, uh, became partner in 2014, I believe, and then became managing partner in 18. Um, and I've been managing the office ever since. For those who aren't familiar with the Lee model, what does being partner mean? Yeah, so partner, um, the way Lee works is you're either one of, one of two positions. You're either an associate, which is, um, you know, just starting in the business and you are working under a fixed split or you become a partner or shareholder. A partner or shareholder is once you've met um, a certain income uh, criteria or threshold, you then are able to become part of uh, the shareholders of the office which means you also split in the operational costs. But when you do this, it allows you to substantially take higher splits home than in a traditional house that either puts you on a, you start at 50 and then maybe you go to a 70 and then you go to an 80 or something. Um, so we just have two, two thresholds. So it's all based upon uh, revenue that that particular broker does over a, a period of time. Yeah, I love that model because I, I never I never started in commercial real estate. I started Adley and Associates. Yeah. So um it, it, it's interesting. I mean, the splits come out to be like 90%. It's awesome. Yeah, I was just working. We just closed our fiscal year. You probably uh, saw one of my Instagrams. Uh, our average for this year for our shareholders in our Pleasanton office is 88%. That's, That's awesome. It's, it's awesome. So when you see those types of numbers and then, you know, and I compare and contrast with what other houses are doing, um, we're significantly higher, almost 15 to 20%, depending on the house. Uh, that you want to compare with. And that, that turns into a lot of money on revenue that technically is already in someone's pocket. Yeah. Um, it's not like you're going out and digging out 20% more deals. You're literally just getting 20% of what you've already done. So yeah. it could be a big change. And, and that's why you see a lot of entrepreneurial uh, brokers over on the lead platform. A lot of our brokers actually do invest as well into real estate. So it, it's off it, it's very often that I will call a broker um, in another Lee office and they'll say, yeah, I've got an ownership interest here or there. And it's, I truly believe it's because you've got people who've got a little bit more vested um, in themselves because they take that, that extra savings and put it somewhere else. Oh yeah. So that makes sense. Platform. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Um, so tell us a little bit, um, you know, starting off in marketing and then going to brokerage um, you know, kind of what are some of the, techniques, approaches that you've used to really just crush in commercial real estate. I mean, look at you now and now you're running a whole office, which is a blessing and a curse, but you know, tell us a little bit about what tricks you, <laughs> you have. Some days I love it. And some days I'm like, what am I doing right now? Yeah. Amen. Um, so we were just kind of talking about this. My, uh, the inspiration and kind of identity with technology came really early for me. In 2006, we were working on a, a program or actually just our, our website um, when I was with Aegis of SMOF, we called it small office space. And all we did was keep a spreadsheet of what the small office space availabilities were. And from that, we were generating a ton of leads. And so the, the question was, how do you turn these leads into income for somebody? Because there's enough there that somebody could probably work on these, but is it something you want to work on every single day? Is it just one person? Probably not. But very quickly, we realized that you could monetize off of having information palatable at people's fingertips, especially when it came to small space. Um, and so from there, it evolved into a more blog type status. 
when I left and um, started doing retail, I continued on with my own blog, which I started in 2009 called The Storefront, um, which continues on to this day. It's actually being transitioned into a website as well. So I've carried that blog with me the whole time. In 2010 and 11, I was able to directly take deals off that blog and put tenants into spaces. Um, so I quickly saw that there was real monetization that can come off of online presence. And since then, although it hasn't been in the forefront of my business plan all the way along, when COVID hit, I realized very quickly that if you want to be with the times and actually be ahead of the curve, I need to put more time and effort into this side of the business because it is where the business is going. Um, especially when you parlay that with some of the um, studies and research and, and things that have come out. I think Deloitte did a study about why commercial real estate can't recruit. Well, we can't recruit because we're so far behind in technology that our recruits can't figure out what we're doing. Um, they get into these old databases that are his, you know, prehistoric and it doesn't work. It, it, it's not, it's functionality isn't there. And so as a whole, and this, you know, kind of wraps into being organizationally a president of Lean Associates, there's 68 of us presidents. Um, there's been a big push and I continue to be a big push on our, our board that we need to really put technology in the forefront because it does absolutely affect our ability in the future to not only get recruits in the door, um, but it'll affect our visibility as a company going forward as well. So. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And tell us a little bit about like what, so you use the blog and yeah. you're trying, you, you, at the beginning, you're, you're tracking small office space. You're trying to generate leads or you're trying to yeah. monetize them somehow. From a marketing standpoint, I took it from a pure marketing director standpoint of, okay, how do I just get eyes on our website? How do we generate? And at that point, um, it was keyword, right? It, in 2006, it was your, your search engine optimization was much different than it is now. Uh, back then it was content creation, which hasn't changed all that much, um, keywords within content creation and uh, amount of postings that you're doing. And we were simply just trying to get towards the top of, of searches, um, primarily using those three avenues. And so what the, the blog and website and Smop did allowed us to consistently be updating. And then that gave us the ability to kind of pop up in those search engines. Um, and so taking that basis, I applied that again to my own blog. So my, my first blog that I started the storefront um, was very narrowly focused, still very is narrowly focused to my immediate submarket, downtown Livermore, Pleasanton, Tri-Valley, Dublin. It doesn't really branch out a bigger scope. Um, that's something now that I'm figuring out how to do is how do you get, okay, so now I've got this local level down, um, you know, how do we kind of take the next higher level elevation? And that's where, you know, something like a clubhouse I found that was very interesting and very refreshing. So my Instagram almost is my next level. So if I've got the dialed in, here's, you know, exactly what's happening in my submarket, my next level up is kind of my clubhouse and my Instagram. So let's uh, fast forward to today and then let's bridge the gap in between. So you start blogging. What, what platforms, what technology tools are you uh, investing time and energy in uh, with today? So um, I've traditionally hosted my blog on uh, WordPress. I purchased new domains and I actually engaged with a um, social media and um, marketing coordinator who is kind of doing some shifting around right now. I'm having um, I'm a personal over for me because I'm going 10 different directions at any moment in time. To get it done right, I know that I need to put it in somebody else's hands for 90 to 120 days, get it up and going. I'll do my own content, but I need that person to schedule out what's going on, what should be where, because I don't have the time or the resources to know exactly how to do this correctly. And that's where I think you have to make the investment in yourself and the investment in your own business too. And so I've chose to invest in somebody who knows this and who can just get it out, get it going, get all these things done for me. Um, so we now have the website going she's changed around. I have a, a partner that I work with Shelby. She's great. So we're tying her stuff into, so the blog, the website, the Instagram, um, I'll run the Twitter feed. Shelby runs the Facebook. So we're kind of figuring out this plan where we can enroll it all together. And that's something we're under the process of now. Um, so we're figuring out all those little places, but I would say, uh, for the most part, my 
my plan has always been very organic and it hasn't been very heavy in terms of money. I've found that the best things that I've done are actually more personal in my time. The, the most read articles on my blog are me posting about why is second generation restaurant space so valuable? Mm-hmm. That's a blog post that's been read 50,000 times over the course of eight years. And it's information that never gets stale because what applied when I wrote that in 2015 still applies today in 2021. Um, so I don't think that you need to get too fancy with it. Um, And I think that people just need good content. So as long as you can invest a little bit of time into producing good content, I think you're going to do okay. uh, Just putting yourself out there. I totally agree. You know, that it's, it's, um, it's really interesting to, to see how, and the, the technical term in like the search engine world and the, uh, and the mark, the digital marketing world is evergreen content, right? Something you write today that can live for generations, right? Like triple net, like that's never going away. Never right? going. Yep. yep. So Absolutely. yeah, that's great. So what other, in addition to the social media, so you're doing the blog, you're doing some updates. Uh, what other, uh, like what are your core tools or, uh, or social media channels that you're using? So I would definitely say um, Instagram is is my go-to. I find it to be the easiest, the quickest. You can pop it open. You can get something out there and close it, be done, and get on with the day. So that is is definitely my go-to. My next, I would say, is, is Clubhouse. I think that there's, uh, for a multitude of reasons, and I hate to call it social media, but in, in a way, it is social media. It is, it's, you're figuring out who the players are. You're adding value. It's, um, I think it's a, a social media mixed with a um, platform that allows more business and uh, more growth. So as much as it's not social media, it, it kind of falls in that category. Mm-hmm. I would say that's where I put the second most amount of effort into. Um, and that's also because I just love talking real estate. So why not, if I've got an extra 10 minutes of time, 30 minutes of time, go jump on clubhouse and, mm-hmm. and talk to somebody. Um, I think LinkedIn is actually a fairly, I've got a fairly good platform as well. I've gotten really good responses, um, from videos that I've posted on there. I mean, I think I did like one video just to kind of see how it all worked. Um, and it was like 4,000 views and Wow. That's good. It was crazy. It, 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 I wasn't even expecting it. It was just kind of like, Hey, I'm going to put this up and see what happens. Um, so you do get a lot of views from it. You get a lot of interactions um, from it as well. And I think it's just one of those things that makes you still um, viable in the market. People see you're doing deals or you're out on tours. That's really all they need to know that you actually are a player in the market. Nobody necessarily needs to see every faucet of your day. Uh, but if you can post a tidbit here and there, it just keeps you at the top of people's brains when they are thinking like, oh, commercial real estate, maybe I should call Jessica today or, or what's Andrew up to? You know, we should go jump over to his uh, podcast. So it's just those little touches. It's the same thing I think we've always done. It's just formatting and in a way that makes more sense. So let's talk about the elephant in the room, right? Um, brokers and theory professionals always say, look, I keep on hearing about digital marketing and social media, email marketing. I mean, why should I invest the time doing that when I, sh- I, I should be investing the time picking up the phone instead? Why, why am I going to do that? I'm just going to ignore it. I mean, you run an office, you've been successful. Yeah. You're also not just focusing all your time and energy on social media. So what advice would you give um, commercial real estate professionals in the industry of how to look at this? Yeah. So couple of things. I would say, first off, you have to be consistent in whatever it is you're going to do. If you're going to be the cold call guy, be the cold call guy, but you better be consistently the cold call guy. If you're going to be the guy who knocks doors, be the guy who knocks doors, consistently knock doors. If you're going to be the social media person, make sure you're consistently putting out content. Um, and I think you need to pick what works for you. So you're going to have so many, there's so many different styles and sales in commercial real estate and the way you handle things. I see it all the time. Um, I actually, one of the things I tell even my young brokers, Hey, even if you have this one mentor that you're working with, go tour with other brokers in the office, go see how they do it because people's styles are wildly different and they all make, everybody is, is doing something right. So if you can take a little bit here, a little bit there and kind of pick uh, and figure out what your shtick is, you got to figure out your shtick and, if your shtick is I'm in front of guys, um, social media doesn't work for you. Well, that's fine. That's totally fine. Uh, but 
figure out what your shtick is and, and go with it. Cause you don't want to be the guy who's kind of in between and can't figure out exactly what you're doing. It doesn't send the right message. Um, I would say that there should be, if you're not a social media person, if you're not even a digital media person, that's okay too, but invest in somebody who's going to make you present online. Because I'll tell you what, if you think your client isn't going online and running a search through whatever means they're, is available to them to find space before they've called you, you're crazy. There's mm -hmm. too much information at people's fingertips instantly. And so the moment you don't pick up that phone call or that email isn't answered, they're going to start looking around just out of curiosity. So making sure that you are there and present is a really big deal. Um, even if you aren't a social media person, just have media available where somebody, if they are out there looking for properties, they're going to stumble back across your name. If you want your client to come back to you, that's my whole thing uh, with it is if my client goes out, I don't care if they go look at stuff, people are going to go look at whatever's out there. But as long as, Hey, Oh, Jess is on this listing or, Oh, I didn't realize she did that deal. As long as you've got that comeback card, as they're circling the rounds of the, the internet of the, so many, the endless possibilities of what's going on in the deep, dark sea of the internet, you're good. Um, and so that's where I, I press upon, um, the brokers and agents in my office is don't just because it's not your, your shtick, don't completely get me put no attention to it, put some attention to it, but just make sure it's meaningful where you do. So what is Jessica Mauser? Like what's the, if you had a pie chart where uh, in the business generation side, not necessarily operations, but I, I think that people should get a glimpse on like how much you're actually spending in admin and management since you're running the office and you're, you're player coach, like all yeah. the lead presidents are. Yep. Um, so you're doing deals, you're managing an office, you're recruiting, you're doing a thousand things. Like in a pie chart, where, where does uh, Jessica Mauser's time go? And to make sure that you have a pipeline of new business uh, coming in? Yeah, so I would say that uh, probably a good 30 to 40% of what I do is actual deal work on deals, uh, whether that's lease negotiations, LOIs, things of that nature. So 30 to 40% right there off the top is just getting deals done and completed. Um, I would say my lead generation, we'll call it, is probably more so on the social media, the digital media side of things. That's probably 10 to 15% of what I do. Um, marketing my properties is probably equal, somewhere 10 to 15%, right? So that's about 70% of my time just doing, doing the actual deal, being in the paperwork and in the tranches, the marketing of my properties that I have listed and uh, prospecting for potential new business is all right there. And, and I would kind of call that cross networking as well, because that all kind of runs hand in hand, right? So um, the other 35%, 30% is operational side of things. Some weeks it's flip-flopped. Um, for example, it was the end of fiscal year in March. So March was a tough month where I spent, you know, an extra 20% of time in the office because I got to close our books. And um, that's not an easy thing to do when you've got 18 brokers and everything else that you have running around. So um, a year of COVID, we're also planning an office move right now and all those good things. So I had to go find- do you, do you, By the way, do you need a broker? Because I know a good one. She grew up yeah, in Livermore. So all right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, might, I might need a broker. Mine's really slow right now. <laughs> I don't know what she's doing, but she is, she needs to get with it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so you're spending, uh, so you, you were, you were, you were mentioning before I cut you off that, uh, you were spending a lot of time in March, uh, flip flop where you're spending 60% of the time yeah. on, and on it, these things. You know, and that's where I come home at night and honestly the kids go down and I pop open my computer and I start doing invoicing or reading through P and L's, um, or doing reconciliations. And so what I find is, uh, my evening time you know, through the month of March and, you know, at the end of every month too is, is spent reconciling and, and getting that operational um, things ironed out. And then I try to spend just one day a week where it's like, this is operations day. And that way every week is kind of planned out to some degree so that I'm not um, all over the place. And there's, and that's the way that I've found it works for me. I have to have some type of schedule. I got so much stuff going on. It doesn't have to be a rigid hour by hour schedule, but if I know every Monday is my day where this is what I'm doing, 
that works for me. I just need to have those days and knowing, okay, this is, this is what my key is today. Here's tomorrow's here's Wednesdays, here's Thursdays. Um, and, and also, you know, having the social, my social media and a digital marketing manager, she's kind of caught on to that as well. So now she schedules out, like, she'll send me a ping, like, Hey, you need to get something up today. I know yesterday was your office day, probably some boring stuff, but if you have time, get something up today. Um, so that's kind of the key to life is, for my life, at least is understanding and and kind of sticking to my days of what day I'm supposed to be a broker and what day I'm supposed to be a coach. Are you, uh, are you, when you're saying the, uh, the time that you're spending prospecting, what, what, what does that entail exactly? Are you cold calling? Are you like, what, what are you doing to, to. Yeah, I wouldn't call it because I've been doing this for so long. It's less cold calling, more warm calling at this, at this juncture. Right. Um, And so what I'm doing mainly at this point is taking my listings Um, I'll create a spreadsheet of who I think are going to be really good fits for a listing. Um, And then I create that list through whether it's ICSC, plain vanilla shell, um, whatever tenant directories I have at hand. And then I keep lists too of who, what brokers represented tenants in the past that I've received LOIs from. And so I'll kind of cross-reference everything and I'll come up with a, a good list. And the next day I go into the office and I sit down and first thing I'll bust out those 20 to 30 calls to those tenants that specifically fit that space. So when I'm calling, I'm typically sitting down with a very targeted approach to who I'm going to talk with that day. And how does, how does like Instagram and, uh, and the blog and everything else that you're doing fit into that picture? Yeah. So, um, what's really interesting about that is, is I'm learning all these algorithms about Instagram that I had no idea about, like no clue. I mean, I'm, and I'm not, yeah, I'm not a technology person. I, I bless your heart that you are, Andrew. It, it, I just, I'm kind of an old school broker in that sense. Like it's very clearly that I was trained by old school brokers because <laughs> I, I don't like, I get it, but I'm not like savvy in it. So it's like, okay, I, I could do this, but don't, don't put too much on me. Cause I'll, I'll fool you very quickly into thinking that I know something I don't. So, um, so I actually have been learning that in order to get people to see what you're posting, you have to interact with their content, right? And so I actually find myself putting aside, and this is like the worst thing in the world because it's something I've always gone against. Like I hate my phone, I hate being on my phone, but I go put aside time when I know I have something I'm gonna post next week. Say it, it's a listing for a restaurant space. I think uh, you commented last week, one of my ones was calling all tap rooms, right? The week before I had actually spent time going on and interacting with every tap room and every brewer and all that whole group of people on social media the week before so that I knew when my content went out, they would be able to see what I was was putting out there because 3% of your viewership is nothing on a standard post. So you, you have to figure out how to get that out in front of the people you want. So I actually have to kind of plan a week ahead of time of what am I going to post next week? And if this is going to be a digital marketing for a specific property, or if I'm looking for a subsector of tenants, I need to think that out now and go start interacting and build that up ahead of time. And that is something that a year ago, I never thought about. That is something if you would ask me 10 years ago, if I was going to be figuring out a week ahead of time, how to interact and make sure that my content was being seen, I would have never ever thought about. Uh, But that is right now how I have been approaching my digital marketing, as well as my constant contact campaigns. I I still do all those. I think those are important. Occasionally, I'll do a postcard, Um, not as much feedback. But I think sometimes when you can send them out to the same group of people that you've been sending them to for years and years, and they get your postcard, they go, Oh, I haven't seen this in a while. And I'll get a phone call just for the sake of like, I haven't gotten a postcard in so long. It's, It's great to see you're still sending these. Um, but it's obviously a different generation that I'm reaching with a postcard versus when I'm pre-planning what my digital marketing strategy is going to be on Instagram. So how did, how did that help uh, when you were following the tap rooms and all that stuff uh, and the breweries uh, when you actually made that post? Yeah, you know what? It was uh, really interesting because it, and I got a screenshot from um, somebody else within my office who goes, hey, your Instagram post made it to a brewer in Nevada who then went on his Facebook and said, Hey, would you guys support a Bay area tap room? And in it linked to my Instagram post. 
That's um, so cool. And so through like the network of network of networks, you know, it's like, okay, well, it got out there. Did I, I didn't necessarily get the call, but I know that it made its way around there. And I now have that person on my hit list, right? Because now I'm like, hey, they engaged, maybe not directly with me, but they engaged on my content. And I can now see that there's some wheels turning there. So if, you know, that person, not that I'm going to spam them, but that particular business obviously has, um, reason to maybe have some commercial real estate needs in Northern California. And it's a nice warm call now versus, Hey, I'm Jessica. You don't know who I am. You know, it's like, Hey, heard you saw my Instagram posts. We'd love to talk more about it. It's totally different phone call now. Well, essentially to just to highlight, basically what you've done is you, you actually have a true lead. Like you have a lead that, you know, you could have called, spend a week calling a bunch of people cold, But somebody else who other people trust grabbed your post. So it brings credibility. And now you know that that, that might be a, 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 a good candidate or prospect for you. Absolutely. The amount of people you can reach. And this is where, you know, I found um, doing pulling lists on specific SIC codes. Um, for example, if I'm doing a constant contact blast, I will look at the property and blasting and I will find who is the tenant who makes the most amount of sense for this, especially in my sale. This is more so when I'm doing um, sales and acquisitions of uh, owner user type properties. I will go pull a list and the list is very targeted. Is this a a general contractor? Is this um, a heavy industrial user? Is this light industrial user? Who who is the tenant for this particular building? Um, Especially in some of these flex products, right? And now that we're seeing retail and industrial kind of collide, it's it's a whole different animal that you have to open your mind to. And so I'll take SIC codes and really drill down to specific industry types. from there, there's tons of resources to find emails of, of companies and you can do it in a, a logistics, whether it's um, a zip code or a radius search, whatever it is. I think um, Info USA does this, Database USA, uh, CCIM site to do business has one of these uh, databases as well. I think they all generally pull from the same route, but um, you can get these emails and then you flush them into a nice constant contact or whatever email campaign you're using with a video of the property. And you can now go out and reach 1200 people in one Mm -hmm. hit versus how many days on end would it take me to either door knock, cold call, postcard, or email 1200 people. Yep. I I can see my click throughs. I can see how many people opened it. And that person now knows, oh, she sells buildings in this market. Maybe this isn't my building, but shoot, I want to know how much my building's worth because I'm around the corner or I'm thinking about buying something in the future. Um, That's a lot of the feedback that I get. It isn't necessarily getting the buyer out of that, but you get a lot of um, a lot of interaction from those emails, especially when you include something a little more personal, like either, hey, let me give you a quick tour of this building. Mm-hmm. And you walk through and do the video tour along with um, the pictures and brochure. A pictures and brochure are, are pretty two dimensional. People want to see the video and, and get into the space. Totally. So yeah. what advice would you give uh, other commercial real estate professionals who are not doing what you're doing or people who are just starting out? Yeah. So I would say first and foremost, that kind of goes back to a question that, you know, I was asked in like 2008 or nine, what's your stick? You got to find your stick. You got to figure out what it is that you're willing, you want to invest your time into, because you're going to have to stick with that. Um, With commercial real estate, it's it's like, you can't jump regions. You're going to be starting all over. It's really not that great to jump offices. Um, Maybe you can at, at, at some juncture, but you don't jump offices in your first, first, year, three years, five years, it's, it's, that's a tough time to do that. Mm-hmm. Anything with commercial real estate is consistency. You have to stick with it. Um, so figure out what it is that speaks to you and, and, and really put your time into it and invest personally into it, whether that's monetary or just your time. I think in the beginning, it's really easy to invest your time and see a lot of reward for that. Um, don't underestimate your value in the beginning. I think a lot of people do that and it, it sets them back. But you've got something to share. You can make yourself relevant. Um, If you want to be the cold call guy, be the cold call guy, but stick to it. If you want to be the digital marketing person, stick to it. But no matter what you end up doing, make sure that you are easily found and present um, in one way, shape or form on the internet, whether that is a blog or it's just on living on your website where you contribute to every once in a while, having an Instagram page, having a Twitter, something out there where people can see that you are generating real deals and you are generating real value. Um, And if you can do that, you're going to be fine. 
Yeah. And why is it important? I mean, is it important because you're going to to generate leads off the Instagram or different things? I don't, like- know, I don't know that you necessarily will generate a whole lot of leads, but I think what it does is it it resonates with people that you are you are active and that's what people want to see. Nobody wants the broker who's not do who does one deal a year. You want the broker who's in the know, right? You want the person who knows the comp around the corner. You want the person who's busy and out there because it's a tough real estate market. Mm-hmm. COVID or not, it's a tough market out there right now. Um, if anything, COVID's kind of impacted. If you look at, at industrial, for example, good luck finding a multi-tenant industrial building right now. It's not going to happen. I don't care what market you're in. Um, even you look at the restaurant, second generation restaurant spaces and retail, they are flying right now. Maybe the bigger spaces are, are struggling a little bit, but if you want a QSR something under 3000 square feet, that's in a good location, you're going to have I don't know, three, four, five other bids out there. I mean, we're talking to Eddie down in Arizona, 12 offers on one restaurant space. It's wild. So the market is the market isn't as sleepy as, as what people want to give it credit to. Um, so you do want to work with somebody who's active because your deal's probably off market. So I think that it just lends a lot of credibility that someone can pop onto your LinkedIn and see, oh, this is what. Andrew's been up to this week um, mm-hmm. or, you know, Andrew closed this deal last week. It, it just lends, it's almost your digital resume at this point. People you know, are moving away from your resume and they're looking at your digital resume. You know, what, what's interesting and I, I don't think it ever gets brought up when I ask this question is the, the, I hate the word lubricate. It just sounds gross, but streamlines, it, it definitely cuts through. It, it ba- basically breaks through reaching out to your target prospect uh, and then actually having a conversation with you because they feel like they know you. Yes. So it's almost like you've developed rapport, credibility, and trust in like in syndication almost like it, like yeah. being distributed in or like, let, yeah. yeah, let's say for example, I want to do business with um, Ed and Vic, right? Yep. Right. And he's got all these, these families and I'm a sales rep at Digsy. So I want him to subscribe to our online marketing or we want him to buy virtual tours, want him to buy a a bunch of like services and stuff on the platform. Well, if we call, if we call Ed and the other people we're targeting like Ed, he's not going to take our call. But if we go and follow him on Instagram and LinkedIn or whatever social media he's active on, and then, you know, we comment on him on whatever he posts and then uh, we keep on doing that, like true engagement, just to show that, hey, we're alive. And then, you know, he starts following up and he sees our pose. Then when my sales rep goes out and reaches out to Ed, they're like, oh, I love that, you know, make, yeah. ply, make plywood, uh, you know, cheap make again. Cheap again. Hat. <laughs> yeah. That one was great. That was a yeah. good one. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Because that is fun. all the rage on, on Clubhouse right now. It's like, oh, plywood, you know, the cost of lumber has gone up 157%. I believe it was very close to that number. But yes, it has gone up 100 But that was that was great. But no, no. I, I, and I, I took it from somebody else. And, uh, <laughs> I made sure that, you know, you saw his LinkedIn yeah. thing just so he doesn't think I'm ripping it off because he deserves a credit because I thought it was hilarious. But, you know, then Ed would be like, oh, that's so funny. And then that sales rep may have never spoken to that person. But now there's this connection. There is. With not exactly. only him, but all the other people that my team's trying to break, break through to. And I think that's important that gets missed. I think most people think that having hey, to post on Instagram for a month consistently and I'm going to get leads. And it's like, no, mm-hmm. you're going to do that. Yeah. You're going to develop credibility. And then at some point in time, somebody will reach out to you. But when you make that phone call, you send that email, people will respond and engage with you because they, they you, you've developed a relationship from a distance. Yeah. And I'll say, you know, especially Instagram, it's um, engagement on Instagram, I find is um, I'm not looking, I don't think of Instagram as a place where I'm going to monetize. For me, it's more so of a place where um, I can share what's going on in my world, but then it also opens up the door. And I find this really important for for listings. I've got two new construction um, projects, retail projects that have uh, mixed use components to them. And 
they are going to pull a more geographic area than my little spot here. And so what I use Instagram for is it actually, to me, is kind of like that. It runs my brain a little bit because I'll go add a bunch of different restaurants and um, San Francisco restaurants. And then they start linking to the other people they know. And the next thing you know, you're down this like dark web of restaurants that have great food and I'm starving now, but I've also discovered so many restaurants and and cafes that I had never knew were in the East Bay or in the Bay area whatsoever. And now I'm, I'm liking what they're doing. And I'm like, that looks really good. And then I jump on DoorDash. I'm like, can they DoorDash to my house now? Like what's good. And so I find that it's even opening doors in my own life to businesses I may not have ever seen before. And it's a really cool opportunity because now when I do go to pitch a listing or I'm looking for a specific tenant, I'm like, what would work really well here? And I'm like, man, I saw that restaurant on Instagram. They have those great, you know, they had the brioche French toast. Like that would be awesome here. Where can I find a breakfast spot? Right. And so for me, it, it doesn't even necessarily need to be monetizing, but what it's doing is it's almost like jump starting my brain instead of having to get in my car and go drive the market to go get some ideas or leads or thoughts on like what my next marketing move is. I jump on Instagram and I I'll just start searching Bay area food, just type in hashtags and you'll start running across things you never knew existed. Um, which I find actually really fun and, very intriguing on the retail side of things. So it's powerful. I think we've given some people some interesting perspectives. Thanks to you, Jessica. So if people uh, are interested in connecting with you, how, where can they find you? Yeah. So my Instagram is at nine, two, five CRE underscore Jessica. Um, I am with lean associates, East Bay Inc. You can also find my blog at the storefront.wordpress.com um, new website coming fairly soon. That'll be 925cre.com. Um, and always use our find me through Lee and associates. That's the easiest and fastest way to get me. You can also see all our listings up there. Um, or just type in my name to Google. I'm sure there's some awesome stuff that'll come up on me. <laughs> and she has a fun <laughs> she name to just <laughs> Jessica Mauser, M A U S E R. So cool. Yes. I love that last name. You can also find me on clubhouse. I've got my schedule up on my, uh, on my bio on Clubhouse, I tend to host some rooms, um, sometimes with Andrew on Fridays, Sundays with Shlomo. Um, I jump around a little bit during the week too. So would love to have um, people drop in and say hi on Clubhouse. That's a, a great format to uh, to hear some cool commercial real estate jargon and good stuff that we got going on over there. Jess, thank you for making the time. This has been a blast. We appreciate it. Thanks, Andrew. Cool. Well, I'll let you go make some money. Yeah, that's the goal, right? Yep. <laughs> All right. I'll see you later. All right, guys. If Have a you, good one. you too. All right. Make sure guys to subscribe. Uh, if you guys like this content, please leave us a review on Apple podcasts or your player of choice. And Jess, thank you once again. And we will see you guys next week. And there we have it, people. That is it for this episode brought to you by Digsy, the one-stop shop for marketing commercial real estate properties online and outsourcing your work. So you can save time, energy, money, win more business, close more deals. Make sure to check us out at getdigsy.com. Again, that's getdigsy.com. That's G-E-T-D-I-G-S-Y.com. Thank you for tuning in. If you haven't yet, would love it if you guys leave us a review. If you see this on YouTube or any other platforms, please give us a thumbs up and leave a comment. We'd really appreciate it. And we look forward to seeing you and hearing from you next time.